How do you replace a condenser motor on a commercial package unit? Today, we're gonna to be replacing one of these outdoor motors on this commercial package unit, and I'm gonna show you how. I got a call, a customer said they hear a squeaking noise, and I had to come out and replace the indoor fan belt. After I replaced the fan belt, turned the unit on, I heard a terrible noise, which was an indication that we had a motor that was gonna go out. I asked the customer, do you wanna go ahead and order the motor and me come out and replace it or wait till it goes out? They said, let's go ahead and get it done. So that's why I'm here today. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. This is Taddy Digest. I'm Tad, let's get started. While we're waiting for the equipment to run in the cooling mode, I wanna show you the rating for the amp draw on this motor and show you where the power comes from for these outdoor fan motors. Because if we hear a motor that doesn't sound like it's working properly and the bearings could be shot, can we tell which motor it is based off of the amp rating or the amp draw versus the rating? So it's running now and look at the amp rating. Both those motors, 2.8 amps. It shouldn't pull over that, right? Now where does the power come from? You can see there's two contactors that are three pole right here. There's two compressors. Each compressor is fed with these contactors. Then up here, we've got a two pole contactor. This is where the power for those outdoor fans comes from. To the left over here is our two capacitors. One capacitor per outdoor fan. Now these two black wires, one of these is for one of the fans and the other is for the other fan, right? So if I take my clamp and put it around each wire and put it on amps, what are we getting with this motor? 2.4, now let's do the other one. What's this one? 2.4. All right, so no amp draw, uh, no, no difference in amp draw, right? But we could measure the other line, which would be the other side. Let's do that. So let's see if we can find it. I think it is, uh, here it is. Okay, one of these is for one fan, 1.9. And then here's the other fan. Oh, let's get it around. Two, 1.9 and then two. So this one is pulling a little more amps and I bet you that's the motor that I think is bad that's got the loud noise now. Based off of noise, let's see if you can guess which motor it is uh, that we need to replace. Is it this one? Or is it this one? All right, now let's go ahead and start the process of replacing it by turning off the disconnect. Always disconnect the power before you start replacing the motor. Let's see how old this unit is and how big it is. So this is a ZF120. So that means it's 10 tons, 120,000 BTUs. And how old is it? We take the second number and the fourth number and put them together. So two, one. So this is a 21 model. So this fan motor lasted for four years. All right, once the power is disconnected, we can take off the fan guard. And if you guessed it was the motor to the left, then you were correct. But we'll see if we can notice a difference between the two motors, right? You hear that? Let's take the top off or the guard off for this motor. See if there's any play. All right, I'll leave, I'll leave that last screw on. All right, oh. All right, so this motor And this motor. Side to side, play. Hear the sound? 
Now the bad motor. That's side to side, right? That's an indication our bearings are bad. Now up and down doesn't matter, but side to side does. Also, when the motor's running, if you have a way to check the heat buildup, right? With an infrared thermometer or with a thermal imaging camera, if the motor's getting very hot, then that's an indication that it needs to be replaced. Make sure the coils are clean because that can cause this, these motors to overheat, this condenser coil specifically. Now let's move on to the next step. Now get your adjustable wrench so you can loosen up the set screws. That, so that way you can get the hub and the blade off of the shaft. You may need some sandpaper to sand that shaft. You may need some WD-40. We're gonna loosen up these set screws. This one first, and it's got two. There's one, there's two. Oh yeah, we're not gonna have any issues getting this motor off. I mean, this blade off, look at that. That is nice, and you know the reason it was so easy is because this thing's only four years old, so that's why. If it was 10 years old, then we'd have a harder time. I wish this motor would have lasted longer, but you know, you get what you get, I guess. All right, now, one thing we need to do is there's a ground wire, and we gotta take that ground wire loose because it's connected to the motor so we're going to take our drill in 5 sixteenths. Make sure we don't drop it. Can't really get my drill in there. I need to come over here. All right, there it is. All right, ground wire is loose now we need to take our plug and disconnect it cut the zip tie and then we can take this plug and disconnect it like so that's the power for this motor now we need to loosen up this bolt now get the right socket this is 13 millimeter. Put it right here. You may need a crescent wrench to hold the other side. It looks like I am going to need another wrench. You can also get a socket, an adapter for your socket to go in your drill if you got enough room. Mm. All right. That might be good enough. Let's check and see. Can we pull this motor up? Oh, well. No, we can't. Need to loosen it up just a little bit more. All right. Let's loosen it up just a little bit more. All right. Oh, oh yeah. that's perfect. Some of these mounts don't have the bottom piece. So these motors will slip out and could damage that coil. That would not be good. Looks like I need to loosen it up some more, but this one does have a bottom piece. All right. I think I have got it to where it'll come out now. All right, it's out. <laughs> you hear that? And then listen to this one. Oh man, that sounds good. It's much easier to replace this type of motor than it is to replace a res residential motor, honestly. Commercial motor, you got a plug, you got this, a uh, bolt here in this nut, you loosen it up, take the motor out, it's easy, right? However, the conditions might not be easy. It might be, you might have to go up two ladders, may have a ladder hatch, it may be 95 degrees and you're having to stand on top of the unit. Uh, for me, I'm tall enough for this, but I might need a four foot ladder on, on some. All right. New motor in. 
Let's run that ground wire through there. Come on. Ground wire is through. Plug is on the right side. And the motor, I don't think it was all the way down. I think it was up just a little bit. So I'm gonna have to get this tightened up and then pull this up. Uh, but I'm gonna get this in place and then plug it back in. This time I'm using the adapter and my drill, just making it easy. With the right tools, your job can be really, really easy. So I'm gonna put this right here. Other hand right here. Oh. <laughs> oh man, that's wonderful guys. I was just talking about how this is gonna be so easy and then what do you know? But hey, I got a way to get it. I think I can uh, we'll figure it out. I'm so glad that York decided to put this little panel here. All right. Oh, wow, that's a got to reach pretty, pretty good ways, don't you? Oh, look at that, guys. Look at that. Look at that. All right. Back in business. Let's try this again. Slowly. Oh, that's the wrong way. All right. Let's pull the motor up slightly. Pull the motor up. Oh, go back down just a little bit. Okay, right there. Looks good. Finish the job of tightening. Hopefully I won't lose my drill this time. Now, attach the ground, the ground wire. Oh, and the plug. Go ahead and attach the plug. Right here's the plug. There we go. Plug is attached. Let's get that ground wire in place. Put the wire tie back where the plug was just to hold it. Got that ground screw in place as well. And I wire tied the ground wire too just to hold it in place. All right, now blade back in place. Look at the old motor. If you don't know how far down the shaft to put the blade, tighten up the set screws. I am curious to see what we have for an amp draw on both of our motors now that we have a motor that doesn't have bad bearings. Tighten up those set screws. All right, they're both tight. Do a check. All right, now put the guard back in place. And we're gonna fire it back up and check the amp draw. Here's the number for the motor that I just installed. See, condenser fan motor, that's the number. It's three quarter horsepower, 1110 RPM, one speed, 230 volt, 60 hertz, and uses a 10 uh, MFD capacitor. It's uh, clockwise, rotation, ball bearing, shaft size is half inch, 48Y for the frame. Now this is three quarter horsepower. Uh, this is a large condenser fan motor. You don't see this on residential. On residential, you got one third, one quarter, one half, uh, maybe one sixth, even up to one twelfth. Um, that, those are small mo motors with RPMs that are 850 to uh, you know 1050, 1100 RPM. Um, with a condenser fan motor in a large commercial package, you may see one horsepower, three quarter. Those are larger sizes. Make sure that you check the capacitor. If you ever replace a condenser fan, you need to put on a new capacitor. We just checked both of these capacitors and they are good, but I just wanna mention that. And I also wanted to show you that the part number off of this motor that I put in. Now, hopefully this will kick on and we can get out of here. Now listen to the new motor.
That sounds a lot better. Let's check the amp draw. All right, let's see if we can see any differences. Right here, we're gonna check the yellow, one side of the line. We had two before on, on one and 1 1.9 on the other. So two for that one. All right, let's check this one. Two for that one. So now they're both the same. All right, now let's check the other side of the line. 2.4, I think that's what we had before. And then 2.4. All right, so we do have a change. We have a change in the amp draw. So there's a few different ways we could figure out which motor it was. One was we did a bearing test side to side. The second was we had differences in the two motors and the amps that they were pulling or drawing. So we can look at amp draw. We can also look at heat. Remember that, use your infrared uh, thermometer gun or use a thermal imaging camera in the field. This is a quick way for you to know, oh, this motor's getting hot. Check the amp draw. Well, it's pulling more than it's rated. So it wasn't pulling more than it was rated, but we still had a difference. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope that you learned something. If you did learn something, let me know what it was down in the comments. You got a question? Remember, questions can lead to new content. So definitely put your questions down below. And if you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are and let me know where you're from. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe and smash that bell. Ding, so you know what I'm doing. You want more videos like this? Go check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. I've got hundreds of videos of live experience as a technician in the field to help you be a better technician. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. This is Taddy Digest. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.